called the church. And uh, we feel that it's important for us to talk about it in, in early in the year, 2023, February, because there's a lot of milestones that are happening and ongoing that are accumulating at a more an aggressive pace because the project is coming to a conclusion at this point. We're kind of the midway, we're kind of like, you know, we can see the end of the project, at least for phase one. And so with that is gonna occur some financial um, complica uh, complications, right? So um, we're talking about two things mainly. We're talking about the health of the church financially in terms of just running a church, right? That's paying the bills. and um, just like the main accounting, uh, the donations that are coming in and the expenses that are going out, just, just running the church. And then we're talking about the building project and that also what's coming in to support the building project and what's going out to pay for the building project. And these are two separate things that are happening. And so that's why we've been having two different accounts, one for the church main account and one for the church building account. Now, these things are going to be married together pretty soon because we're no longer going to have a church account per se because phase one will be in, will be moved in. And so now that dynamic of having two separate accounts and having kind of financial updates with just the church account and then the church account, the church updates with just the main account, those are going to be married together into one kind of union. And so with that said, we're looking at the numbers and we're looking at the historic numbers. We're looking at the numbers of the donations that are coming in and what our expenses have been in the past. And now we're looking at what they will be in just months from now, right? We're not, this building project is no longer um, like years from now. No, it's, it's, we're talking months from now. And so our status today, uh, we will not be able to afford our, our monthly expenses a few months from now. And so we have to be really direct with everybody. We have to be very transparent. Also, with that said, there are um, there are items that were covered under the loan that we received, right? So we applied for the loan. The loan is covering the majority of the costs when it comes to the phase one building. However, with that said, the loan didn't cover everything. And I don't know if we were explicit about that, but, but there are fees. There are permitting fees. I, I won't get too much into that as part of the presentation, but there are some um, major categories of financial... Uh, obligations that are not covered as part of the loan that are our um, our responsibility and those are coming up and so in order for us to get to building um, occupancy for us to be able to move in we have to be able to cover those financial aspects as well so there's a lot going on right in such a short amount of time we don't want to overwhelm you but we also need to be very transparent we need to be very direct because um, this is our church this is we're doing this for our kids we're doing this for um, this is this is our house, and so we need to make sure that everybody understands kind of what's going on here. Um, I think that's okay for now. I'll let I'll give it to Carm, who's going to lead us through this presentation, and then Abuna will help and close us. And then again, we do have the site visit at one o'clock uh, as a potential if everybody can go. Can everyone hear me? Okay. All right. Very good. So thank you. So I have the distinct blessing and the honor to represent the board today and uh, discuss the financial update um, of the church and where we are. As Abuna mentioned, he very eloquently described and very simply described the template of what I'll be discussing. So uh, this picture that you see here is actually a really good representation of the uh, color schematic of where we are and how much we have funded, you know, as the color scheme suggests the colors versus the black and white, which is reflective of what we, uh, really suggestive of the proportion of, of the funding that still needs to be covered uh, that we need to come up with. So I'll start with the financial update. And if you look here at this bar graph, allow me to explain it. This is the 22 expenses that go into January and February of this year. So this is 22 beginning of January 2022 to year to date of, as of today. And this covers the expenses and the blue graph that you see here are the blue bars. Those are represent our general day to day expenses to keep our doors open. And you can see a consistency there between the tune of about forty eight to fifty five thousand dollars a month. We need to keep uh, for just general expenses in order to keep those doors open. The 
orange bars represent building expenses or the building the things that relate to the building account fees. Things, for example, grading permits or um, you know the uh, uh, city use permit for, and stuff like that. These are costs that are related to the building project, but are not part of the construction costs. And so these costs have, you know, they've trickled in over time. And you can see that they really started to increase as of November when we started to break ground. And that increase has sustained up till uh, to year to date. Um, certainly it slowed down a little bit, but nonetheless, they will continue to persist. So overall here, um, looking at January 2022, you see a consistency in the payment and for our general expenses, but then you also see sporadic payments that have been made or pay, uh, sporadic expenses for the building as represented by the, the orange bars. Now, when we uh, impose rather the, the, uh, the, the uh, that black line you see here is expense or is the income relative to the expenses. So the bars represent the expenses. The black line represents the income that we've had um, throughout the, from January 22 until today, uh, year to date. The donations, exactly, thank you, the donations. And by and large, we've been able to, they've been pretty, uh, 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 they've been pretty, they've been pretty consistent over time, meaning on average, the 22 expenses ran slightly higher than the income. Okay, on most of the time, you can see that the bars can dip on average. Uh, the bars can dip below the expenses on some months, and other months they're uh, somewhat higher. Um, but And that's been okay if the expenses ran a little higher than, than the uh, income because we came in pretty strong in 2022. Now, come 2023, we've deleted a, or depleted a lot of those funds. And so now we're in a position where we don't have that cushion and it's a little bit more critical that our expenses, sur our, our income rather, surpass that expense that's coming in. Um, a couple of things to note. So you see here in, in September where you see that spike, if you remember our campaign where we accumulated about $300,000 worth through that campaign when we needed to qualify for the loan, that's what that spike represents. Your generosity continued in October, and you can see that our income still was, was relatively much higher than our expenses in October. And in our November, it, it spiked again because of the festival that we had. Okay, and then December was a good month, nonetheless, um, that surpassed our general expenses. But if you look in January and February of this year, we're not doing that great in the sense that our uh, donations are well below the general expense, even let alone the building expenses. And so that again becomes more critical for us because we don't have that cushion that we had in 2022. Now we're really, a, a term that I like to use, we're, we're kind of redlining. Um, and that's, that's a little concerning. Any questions before I move forward with the next part? Is this pictorial? Is this graph? Is it is it pretty clear in terms of what we're what we're talking? About? All right. Thank you. Now I'm going to shift gears and talk about the building. Uh, discuss the building update. So we know that there's you know we've mentioned various phases of this building project, and so to be distinctly clear, this phase is going to have a couple. Or this building project encompasses a couple phases. Phase one. If you could see that uh, is in the blue uh, uh, box and it encompasses the multi-purpose facility. This is a, a 14,000 square foot, more than 14,000 square foot multi-purpose facility that's going to serve as our church. It's going to be where the Sunday school rooms are. It's going to be where our gatherings are. It's really going to be the multi-purpose facility that we're going to dwell in for several years. In addition to phase one, there's the inclusion of, or the completion of the, of the parking structure as well. There's the, uh, um, it's gonna encompass the playground and it's going to encompass the fence that's also necessary, you know, by the city. So those are all, uh, um, um, those are all expenses that are going to be included in phase one. 
that are uh, that are necessary for us to occupy the property. Um, what's not what's separate from phase one and from this project is phase two, and phase two is the sanctuary, and that's the building that we'll be covering that we'll be at some point building well into the future. So not immediately, but at some point in time, we're going to, once we're in a, in a position where we can uh, uh, financially afford to build phase two, we're going to start that process. And that ultimately is going to be our permanent sanctuary or permanent church. And the multi-purpose room is going to serve as just that, a multi-purpose room. So you can see here that in phase one, that encompasses the preponderance or the bulk of the project. That's where the cost is going to come in. Phase two, much later on, the church. But for our purposes today, we're going to focus exclusively on phase one. Now, similar to the dynamics of purchasing a home, when you do apply for a loan and you, uh, you, know, you take on a loan for the house, it doesn't, there's a lot of costs that are not included in the loan, right? So when you're buying furniture, when you're uh, you know, doing the yard, for example, those are not costs that are generally included in the loan. And so the, there are similar dynamics here. The difference is these, these, these costs are much more magnified because of the nature of what we're doing, the nature of building a church and the nature of permitting and, and engineering fees. Those are all things that are not part of the, the loan. They're, the loan only covers the construction costs, the brick and mortar if you will. But there's a lot of additional costs that are not included in the, in the loan or in the church, rather, in the cost of building that church. And what you see here is in the blue, we were able to qualify for and secure a loan for $6.38 million, uh, $6 million in August of last year. And that was well celebrated. And, and that in itself was, was a great stride to have made. In addition to that, uh, when you look at the 6.38, we started the clock or started tabulating costs in, in January of 2022, and the building costs would project to be somewhere in the tune of about $8.5 billion. So that leaves a delta or a gap of about $2 million and change, right? And so from that $2 million and change, we've already paid off $564,000. Now, Coming into this project, we had about $1.3 million into the bank, which, which was a great thing to have. And it's, it's you know, and having that in addition to our expenses was a tremendous success. And, you know, thanks to God, thanks to your generosity, we've been able to come this far. And so this is no insignificant milestone that we, we are where we are at today. Um, when you look at the 564000 that we paid in professional fees, the, the engineering costs, the architecture, the, the, um, the, the various, the, the city permitting fees, the city impact fees, those continue to come and, and we'll continue to pay those along, uh, along the project. But to date, we've paid $564,000, and that's not including the loan on the land that was paid off as well which is about $700,000 or approximately six hundred eighty, dollars to be exact. So that leaves um, an unsecured amount of about $1.4 million that we have to come up with in order to close this project. That is not secured. Um, and it, it, that, that's the gap that we'll be discussing today. Okay, so the $1.4 million. So looking at this timeline... We hear, we see here, um, basically, um, I've, I've, I, at the left of that timeline is the 2022 expense, or what we've done and uh, accomplished in 2022 uh, and year to date. We've paid 564000 in permitting and professional fees, and we've also paid off the loan on the land. So the 1.3 that I was mentioning earlier, that's by and large exhausted. Okay. And so that's, that's, um, that has already been accounted for, that's paid, that's in our rearview mirror. That in itself has been a significant accomplishment today. But then you look at the quarterly breakdown moving forward in 2023, the expenses continue to persist and they're not insignificant. So you see here that by the end of March or you know, by the end of first quarter, which is really by the end of next month, we'll need to gather approximately $200,000 to these $200,000, when you break it down, they look into building establishment fees, professional services, continuing uh, engineering costs, consulting fees, 
uh, that are necessary, as well as city fees that, that we have to pay. Um, that's just by the end of 2020, uh, March of, of uh, by the end of the first quarter. When you look at the end of the second quarter from April to June, we have to come up with an additional $435,000. And that's going to pay for the irrigation and landscape. That may appear um, insignificant. However, that is necessary for the occupancy permit for us to occupy, you know, to obtain the occupancy permit uh, so that we can actually move into the building. Professional fees, we still have to continue paying our bills, our services, our, our, our engineers, our architects, and our consultants. And then we have to start also the AV, uh, 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 including the AV costs. It makes sense to include the AV costs because the walls are open at this point. You're building them in. You don't want to, you know, paint. You don't want to put up the walls, paint, and then have to tear them up again to go into the AV fees so that you can wire the place. So that begins the AV fees. When you look at uh, going to the third quarter into September, we're going to finish the AV infrastructure costs, the Wi-Fi, the tech, uh, the tech stuff, and then towards the end of the year, we hope to have completed the the uh, cost for the, the professional fees and the occupancy stuff, but now we need to move into the building, okay? And so, uh, you know, populating a furniture for somewhere in the tune of about uh, 14,000 square foot is not going to be inexpensive. We're conservatively estimating about 300,000 for that. And then finally, well, in, 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 a Q, uh, uh, in Q1 of 2024, the city is requiring us to build a fence around the perimeter of the property, uh, having the playground for the kids. And so those are things that are necessary to complete the project. Now, we've also been made aware that there is a grant that we can apply for for some of these items. And so we will do our best to apply for some of these things so that we can lower the costs and lower the, the financial um, uh, requirements. And so we're, we're exploring all avenues. And the very fact that, by the way, we're exploring other projects like, like Inland uh, Church, um, you know, really shows that the diligence is being done on behalf of the board, on behalf of everybody, that we're leaving no stone unturned, that we're exploring every opportunity so that when we come at this project, we could honestly say we've looked at all options and this is the best option that we have for the time that we, uh, you know, with, with what we're doing. And frankly, this is really driven by God's will because we're just doing our part and God is opening and closing doors as he sees fit. Now, here is a graph that looks at our projected 2023 expenses and it compares it to the income that we had in 2022. Okay, so... Um, looking at just the general expenses, you can see a slow and consist uh, a slow but steady rise in in the in our financial or in our uh, general responsibilities, and that's primarily going to be driven by the interest only cost that we're going to by the cost of having to pay on an interest only loan on the six point three eight million. So the more we take out to come closer to completing the project the more interest we're going to be paying over time. Okay, so you can see here, uh, perhaps about 45, 48,000 uh, come January of 2023. But then by the end of this year, costs are gonna approach nearly $80,000. And again, that's primarily driven by the, the interest only um, payments that we're going to be required to make. When you take the 2022 financials and you, put that against what we project in 2023, that actually is, is a nice graph to have because you can see overall, while we trend you know, lower on some months, but trend higher on other months, you factor in the, uh, the, the festival activity, overall the area under curve by and large will, will, will be okay with just those costs alone. So that is great news. I mean, it, it's nice to, have, to be able to save that. However, if you plot the 1.4 million requirement that's necessary to complete this project from now until the end of uh, until the end of the year, and I'm going to put in those orange lines that you saw that relate to the cost of building, we're going to be well under uh, underwater on this. So you can see that in most cases, 
even in our best month with the festival, we still will not be able to, to, to pay off the loan if we were to extrapolate it and just rely exclusively on current donations. So with that said, um, you know, this isn't, we realize that this isn't going to come through monthly tithing. The, you know, satisfying this critical gap of $1.4 million is not going to come just, you know, on its own or it's not going to, we, we need to take active measures in order to close this gap. So what are we asking for? First and foremost, we are asking for your prayers. Um, you know, prayers moves mountains, and in this case, this is no different. I think this is somewhat comparable to moving a mountain. Um, we're asking for consistency in your regular tithing, because as you saw that even come February of this year, even though we haven't closed out February just yet, we're a couple months away, we're still well below our critical to meet our month-to-month -month expenses. So minimizing the the, uh, the, uh, the the irregularities rather from month to month is going to make it very helpful for us to keep our heads above water for both the general expenses as well as the building expenses as well. We're asking that you consider it a, a independent of the tithing, the regular tithing. Um, separate from that, we're asking that you, if you can, consider a promissory note or consider giving a loan to the church in order to help close this gap. Um, I'll talk more about the details of this promissory note or this note or this, uh, this loan. Uh, it does have its own um, kind of a, a, a slide, so I'll go into that um, in just a little bit. But also understand that, you know, we as a board are doing our due diligence. Again, we're leaving no stone unturned. There's a number of various subcommittees that work with the board, you know, that, that all with their respective uh, with their respective expertise to support and inform the decisions that we're making. So, for example, you know, the engineering, there is a subcommittee for the building, which, which encompasses engineers and, 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 and people that are familiar with this. And they basically drive and direct and help inform, you know, make, make informed, well-educated decisions that help lower the cost. And so we're doing everything we can so that the cost is, is minimized. When you look, we have a tech committee in place as well. And while the tech uh, expenses may appear to be high, we have come, we've benchmarked it compared to other projects. And we, we realize that this is in fact, one of the most, the more of the aggressive uh, fees that we do have, or the more aggressive, rather, prices that we have. So we're doing our part to do everything we can to keep our costs down so that we can, you know, d be good stewards of, of, of your, your donations. And then finally, realize that the need is real. I mean, you know, we've painted pretty clear or, or uh, you, you know, bars that are, that are, are, are you know, somewhat trended, that are somewhat, you know, show a clean picture. But the reality is, is when you look at some of the deficits and how far we are from completing the project uh, and, and having to do this in such a short period of time, this is not a theoretical concern. This is a real need that we need to be able to complete and finish off in a very short period of time. And we can only do this through your help, through your prayers, and through your continued generosity. And in many cases, there's more than one way to get involved. It's not just fiscally, but your, your efforts and even, um, you know, participating in subcommittees and fundraising committees. This cannot be done on the backs of just a small proportion of the congregation. We really need all hands on board. And so we ask and we actually plead for all hands on board in order to get this, this project done. So going to the promissory note or the loan that we're asking, um, we're basically asking for loans for the church. And one of the uh, avenues that we've considered is rather than, you know, the, the if, if for example, your the, the, the uh, you know, the, the funds are sitting in the bank and they're collecting somewhere in the tune of about two to three percent or so. There is an estimated, uh, we've, we, we as a board are talking about what is a reasonable um, interest, you know, to credit you you know, so the, the interest that you are foregoing, that we would be able to credit you as a tax write-off or as a donation uh, in this in this donation. So in this, or not, not a donation rather, but in this loan. 
So whatever interest you're going to forego, we're probably going to look at fair market value, if not a little slightly higher than fair market value in terms of being able to write that off as a, as a, as a, um, as a donation. Um, as far as the promissory note is concerned, we're making sure to be cognizant or well aware that we're not biting off more than we can choose so that we're not at, it's likely, it's rather unlikely that we would be able to provide or start payments on this, on these loans within, within, within the next year or two. So if you are able to, um, uh, uh, donate or not donate, but even provide a loan. Um, and you can afford for us to start making payments in the next two or three uh, years. We would be very interested in having those discussions. Um, finally, so just in summary, basically, our monthly expenses will increase from the current $50,000 in 2022 to approximately $75,000 a month in 2023, and that's primarily driven by the interest-only payments on the 6.38 million that we're, we're uh, um, that we, with the loan that we've taken. There are inherent expenses totaling about 1.4 million that are not covered by the loan that are urgently needed. So we wanted to make this abundantly clear. The other thing we wanted to make clear is we don't want to find ourselves in a scenario or kind of a, um, um, a swirl, if you will, where we are in delays because what's going to happen is the longer that we are delayed we're going to we may incur penalties from the contractor for these delays and that's not where we want to you know spend our money in we don't want to spend our money with donations and at the same time the longer we're paying rent here in addition to paying interest only that's also not a great use of funds so timing is really critical that we're able to collect this, uh, these funds in an urgent or, or in a timely manner so that we're not paying money on unnecessarily with penalties and with rent longer than we have to and with interest only loans and, and paying in two different places. That becomes a very costly endeavor. And finally, please consider regular, regular almsgiving and offering a loan with contractual terms as you're able to. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much and answer any questions you may have. Okay, did I bore you? <laughs> yes, Mark. So once we occupy the property, then we're going to start making, um, well, then we can start making payments under the principal as well. But as long as we're, we haven't occupied the property, it's going to be an interest only loan. Then it's going to be recalculated once we start to occupy the property. But I just wanted to focus more immediately on, the tw on, on this year and what we're up against versus you know, projecting further into 2024. Next. Hi, Tom. Tom, go ahead. Or, re sorry, go ahead. Well, that's what we are relying, that's where we're asking you to get involved. So as a board, we're, we're happy to work and, and entertain everything and anything on the, on the table. So right now, we, I mean, high level, any other uh, members would like to open that up? But... Okay, so the, the answer to that is those are in, probably in development. Tom? What ideas do you, do you have or do you foresee? Any ideas? So, so that's a great point. You know, what we're careful to do also is we don't want to exhaust the congregation and have these fire drills from time to time. So we're also very cognizant to not do that. Um, you know, the, the, the ask is, is, is great, but we also, right now, we, we're just making it aware of what our needs are. And then what is to follow is something that we would love your help in terms
terms of developing. But in a, ideally, we'd like to do so in a not so many, not not uh, in a not so fire drill fashion. Please, everyone. So that's that's one of the that's one of the big reasons why we wanted to have this meeting today, is because we know that we have these milestones to reach, and it's really a difficult ask for me and Abuna to stand up here and ask for money, and so part of the Part of the, the goal for today is to show you guys the big picture. This is it. And now what we can do is have follow-up conversations saying, hey guys, remember, we're coming down to quarter one. We need to raise X amount. So that every time we come up with these big numbers, we didn't want to say it's April 1st and we're saying, guys, we have to raise $430,000. Like, well, we just raised $200,000 last month. Like, what are you talking? What are you doing with the money? You know, we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to just like, all of a sudden tell you guys these big numbers and you had no context of what we're talking about. So we wanted to show you everything as far as we know, as, as our homework has showed us. And then that way we can say, okay guys, quarter one, our goal is to raise $200,000. Let's go. We have until the end of March to do that. We'll put a thermometer up. We'll do, we'll, I think those campaigns is a good idea just to have visuals on it. And then we'll erase the thermometer. We'll see where we're at at the end of March. We'll erase it, start clean on April 1st. And then we'll say, okay, this quarter, our goal is $435,000. Here we go, zero. We're gonna zero it out and see where we're at. And see if we can raise that up to um, June, whatever, 30th, you know? I think, that's, I think that's one of our ways to articulate what's happening so that everybody's on board and everybody understands what we're doing. And there's a lot of transparency involved. And we just wanna make sure that we don't have to come up here and say, guess what guys, we have to raise Another two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Like what? We just did six hundred thousand dollars. Like that's ridiculous. You know. So we just wanted to make sure you guys saw everything, and then now that we can, now we can follow up a little bit on a more deliberate way. Somebody had a question. Yeah. Yes. I just because I work for a nonprofit, so we do a lot of fundraising too. There's a lot of targeted asking. So I'm just curious, have you guys thought about targeted asking? Like, you know, asking people that you know could maybe <laughs> have some big wallets. But, you know, like that's what we do. We, we actually go ask people that we, I mean, we know their financial standings. And we go and ask them because they want to help our, our organization. So I'm just curious about that. Well, I, I guess I'll, I'll maybe Abuna can speak to it a little differently. But, like, I personally don't know the financial standing of anybody at the church. You know what I mean? Like as a priest, I, I actually have no, I have no idea. <laughs> so um, so it's it's a difficult thing, and I think sometimes um, I think sometimes the same people get tapped. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming because I don't know, <laughs> but maybe a one I can speak to that. I think part of that conversation is also in terms of the loan. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, I just reiterate what Abuna said, first of all, but second of all, I think as a priest or as the church, our responsibility is twofold, is to express the need and to focus on the generosity of the people, right? So my, like we said in the sermon, my goal is to have a church full of generous people. Even if we pray in a barn, I don't care. <laughs> but if we pray in a palace and no one's generous, I, I don't want that, okay? Um, and I'd rather have a thousand people give a thousand dollars and one person give a million. Like that's just my my opinion. Um, and just also personality wise, I don't I don't like to go and ask. I, I mean, okay, anyone anyone who wants to go ask, go ask. <laughs> okay. um, you don't need permission. <laughs> yes. Hmm? I mean, so our job is to be transparent. And say, here's the need. Kind of like what happened in the Old Testament. Um, and like uh, when they came to build the temple or even when they came to leave um, the Egypt to go into the promised land, they were asked to go to the Egyptians and get money and gold from them so they could build the, the tabernacle later in the wilderness. <laughs> right? Um, and the whole main objective, give generously. That was... So that's, that's my goal as, as the priest. And I know... You, we have, like, we have already shown, as, as Karm showed in the beginning, there's been a lot of generosity in the past, and I'm not doubting that. My concern, again, as a priest, is because 
when the numbers of, of people increase and the generosity decreases, that's a problem spiritually. And that, that's my concern. Um, so, David, you have it. Yeah, so, oh. I think um, to build on your, your comment, because I had the same question as well, um, around the giving it, like one person giving a million versus everybody giving it up. If you took our obligation and divided it amongst the families that we have in this church, what is that number? Part of the problem is we don't know exactly how many people in this church. Yeah, but like with the every Sunday, like just rough number. You right? can do we'll the numbers. Need a precise number. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't calculated that. Um, maybe. <laughs> Frankly, that. yeah, I, I haven't either. Uh, honestly, I, 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 it's something that we can look into, but historically, it's just a matter of um, you know, kind of working with what we have. But it's doable. <laughs> to answer your question, <laughs> I don't have those numbers. I try not to tap into those numbers. Is the land available if we did a, a big scale fundraising in the summer, like a jogathon or a festival? I, I highly doubt. I will ask the contractor, but. There's a lot of safety issues, and we had to get special permission just to do this walkthrough today. Um, I, I highly doubt, and we would have to probably get a permit from the city just for that. And we've already did, done that for the, for the groundbreaking, and it wasn't a simple task. Um, we could look into it. Um, but to, to add also to your question, um, I wanted to get the blessing of being able to pray there even during construction so we're thinking of a time in march um even though like as you'll see there's no walls up or anything but to set up a, a table and create a liturgy there on a saturday morning um, before everyone wakes up <laughs> um uh, so that we can take the blessing of and and that's my idea of fundraiser <laughs> come and pray and see and take the blessing of the place um so your heart will be encouraged um that, that's that's my idea. <laughs> yes. I don't know. That. It's basically where you put, it's like a bunch of donors with different companies. It's up to anyone, but basically the whole congregation could email it to like their work and email it to strangers or, or like, well, they know. But you just, everyone emails like 30 people or whatever. And then you create a donor to choose. And then companies can choose would they want sorry, would they want to donate with cops um, and donate like it could be like for this specific reason so it would be like what they called? it could be like um, a donor's choose for the so you could make it as specific as like the entire 1.44 million or it could be for um, this the parking lot. You know, or, you know, it could be as specific as that. But then it goes to all these companies that need to donate anyways, um, you know, for tax reasons. And it could be any random companies. It doesn't even have to be companies that we, you know, know, essentially. It could be anyone that goes on Donors Choose can see the cause, the reason, and then they can decide if they want to donate to that. But it might, it might be something. I can honestly say these are exactly the kind of ideas we need and welcome. And this is, this is you know, satisfying the purpose of this presentation is starting to generate these discussions and moving forward with these initiatives. So thank you for, uh, sh thank you for sharing that. I, I think it's something we need to further discuss. So as a board also, we had discussed that for certain things regarding the building to um, um, itemize that or earmark that for, for, for the congregation here, but we thought it might be a little problematic if we do it at this point in time, because Basically, as Karam like, illustrated, there's a bunch of things that are mandatory, right? So I would want to go asking for an altar, which is at this point optional, <laughs> before we get you know, the landscaping. Um, and, and then if someone even itemizes that, how are we going to be able to even mark that if, if, let's say, they give for the AV, but we need the, the irrigation or professional services now? So it becomes a little problematic. 
um, when, when we get to the nuts and bolts of it. Um, but definitely when it comes to other companies, like that's, that's something that I, th I think that's out of my personal responsibility. Maybe the board can handle um, that type of those logistics. Any questions? So I, I think what's on paper is not reflective of what's coming because not everyone is coming up to me and Abuna or someone else and, and putting their name on the database. And by the time we let everyone out, they're gone. <laughs> so, they don't know who, so on paper, it's like 150, but I think it's almost double that. It should be double that. Um, and that's why I'm saying we can't, <laughs> it, it's, it's getting more and more difficult to gauge that, unfortunately. Um, but. We have QR codes in like <laughs> it's out in the front, <laughs> right? Right on. It's been there for maybe a year. <laughs> Just letting you know. <laughs> but the people that we know, they're here. <laughs> it's it's not you guys that we we're not counting. It's it's the people who left like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> we were just having fun right now, so I took 150 and I divided by the 1.4 million, and it ends up being around 9,000. Right, it's it's very doable. So that's, that's what if, I'm saying. If, if every family, again, it's a lot to ask for, but if every family writes a nine thousand dollars check, I'll that's it. And that's just playing with one hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just took the different. I just took the yeah, it's, I think, thank God, most of us or all of us can. That, that's why I'm saying as a priest, that's my responsibility. To, like, it, it should be very like doable on paper, but why isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> yes, Bobby? So, so two questions. One, I a question about the expenses. The first slide you showed that around the time of the festival, our expenses went up. Does that mean that we're not making money on the festival, or does that mean that that's the income? No, the the black line. The black no, line. The one before the I think. Well, I don't know. I think um, you said that our expenses were higher because of the festival. I just want to clarify that. Income. No, our income is higher. I I think that it just so happened that in November we had to pay. Um, the orange bar. We had to pay a lot towards the projects. Um, it just happened to be in November. Uh, but no, it, that spike happened. Um, we had the festival uh, in the black line, that peak over there. So that was, that's a positive. That's, uh, in, that's the mission towards us. But it just so happened to line up that the building project required us to pay out a lot of money at that point. Okay. A, a case in point, you know, we, to the city that month, we, there was a check written for $100,000 just to the city of Chino Hills. And that's just one, one of many payments. And so that's why you see that orange bar. Um, it's, it's reflective of the building breaking ground, really, and the cost attributed to breaking ground um, as compared to the income. But the income was high. So that, that's the, you know, that was the good part. It just so happened, as Abuna said, that the expenses happened to be higher that month. And then, um... Two, two others, okay, sorry. One, one is, can we request support from the diocese in some way? Is that possible? <laughs> you can ask Siva. <laughs> <laughs> but I think all the churches are pretty, like, thank God we're all growing, and the many churches are building, and usually it's the other way around. <laughs> um, and Sayed not only gets involved unless... Like, for example, we put it on paper, it's doable. But there's some churches where the majority of the people are, you know, literally poor. And so I think it's only happened once or twice where Satan actually did get involved and had another church help qualify the loan for that, you know, poor church to help them out. But they actually, so, I mean, there's a lot of logistics, but it's, it, in my opinion, if I were Satan, I wouldn't. <laughs> there's so many other needs. Um, and it's like, it's kind of like um, the reverse process, what usually happens when it comes to the diocese. Okay. So, yes. And I think there are many other churches, 
out there that might be more financial in need than us. Um, yes. But I don't want to speak on sales. So I'm trying to I'm trying to understand the total annual expenses for 2023 for the church, including loan revenue. Right? It's not just a 1.4; it's on top of right. That's exactly. Right. So what is the total for the an annual 2023 expenses that we're projected to see? So you it's take not the, clear. Probably double that. Because last year, hmm? right. right. So, so it's actually yeah. We're closer to two, a little over two million would be the, the cost if you factor in the you know the the seventy five thousand um, by the end of the year, and that's an average working up to that, uh, plus the one point four. Um, we're looking at a little over two point two point three million. For, for, for expenses. And then if you could also correct me, but from what I remember, I think last year the total income was over a million, right? Yes. So we're, talk we're talking about an increase of like almost 200%. 100% increase. Oh, more than 100%. 100%. Increase. Uh, this is, again, I mean, when you break it down per family, for church, it becomes very doable. And, and this was really one of the, the endeavors or, or, or the goals of, of sharing this information with you is to get more hands on board, not not a, a small, you've heard of the 80-20 rule where 80% of the work is done by 20% 20, 20 of the families. And so our, our objective is to really broaden that, to get more hands on board, not necessarily to get those that are already donating to donate more. It's a matter of getting more hands on board so that we can as a congregation with this project. Is there a way to maybe look at what the tithing was on average from last year to see how much more do we need to raise this year on a monthly basis? Well, I could how many more, okay. you know, how much more money does it have to be per individual sure. that needs to tithe to come up with a number that can cover so we know for sure what the cost will be per individual. So sure. when you're putting the money in, you know how much exactly to work, somewhat of a number, a, 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 an average, as you say, from what last year to what we need to do this year to um, kind of guarantee it's going to happen instead of hoping somebody's going to right. uh, and wishing that it's going to happen. So that's really would be the, the the figure to look at based on, and I don't know the numbers, but based on last year's tidings to what needs to come up to cover the church 100%. But what an, I mean, again, it's something we have to look into, see what was done in the past to what needs to be done going forward to come up with something. So everybody's aware of what needs to be done. So when they do, they know how much and how to cover the dollar amount. Right? Would probably be the best way. To, I mean, that, that's what I think would be probably. No, no, your, just think that. your your point is very well taken. Thank you very much. I personally have refrained from trying to average, you know, on family because it's at the same time it's not a one size fits all, and so we try and become pretty cognizant of that. However, to answer your question, I can share with you the information that we do have. In 2022, we collected. Uh, with campaigns, with with festivals and such, we collected in the tune of about one point, almost one point two million in twenty twenty two. So you take on the uh, you know the, the expenses that we're going to have um, come you know the end of this year, um, and we'll need we'll need it's going to be somewhere in the tune of about two point three million. So we'll need to again we're approximately double. What we we have taken in, so if even if you just look at this graph, and I don't know if you can see these numbers, or I don't have my glasses, so I'm not I'm not able to see this as well. But approximately seventy five thousand dollars come December. It's it's a again. We're going to need a little over a million dollars a month, or a, rather a, a year, to, to pay for those expenses. But that's not including the loan costs. And so I've purposely, you know, s uh, split 
the the, uh, the building costs. So you know to try and make the need clear and separate that from the month to month giving. Um, that's where we're at. But your your suggestions are are well taken, and we'll, we can have those on this as well. So technically, about double. Simplify it. <laughs> So if we double, uh, let's just do the math real quick. If we say 2.4 divided by, we'll, we'll need to call it to about 2.4 divided by 12. Uh, what is the math on that? Six hundred thousand per quarter. So 2.4. So he, um, about two hundred thousand a month. But again, I don't see the two hundred thousand a month. That this would satisfy this. That I don't see us collecting two hundred thousand. You know, going from a state where we're collecting forty-five now or fifty now to two hundred thousand. You know, the practicality of that is it's going to have to be taken in in some sort of group or some sort of campaigns or you know other donations and such. Noel, did you have a question? Uh, I'm very forgetful, um, and I think if uh, maybe we can encourage um, as many people to go on automatic, uh, what is it called? Uh, whatever it is, I know that it's a, yeah, go play or whatever, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, I know that that sometimes helps get into the free budget, and um, for people like us that are not always, you know, without reminders like this, sometimes we're not always thinking about it, and we forget. I would encourage anybody that can or hasn't already to do that. Thank you for saying that, actually. And, and that's that's one of our asks is, is you know, keep this top of mind, uh, you know, so, so minimize the irregularities from the month to month and, and, you know, tithing regularly and such. Uh, right now we're in a bottleneck. This is a real bottleneck where we should be better off once everything settles. But right now the, the, the crunch is, is urgent and it's immediate. Um, and then, and and so also, I'm going to stress again: we really need to minimize any, you know, risk of of incurring penalties and, and unnecessary costs because that's not where we want our donations to go. So thank you for that. I think also I just wanted to add part of the part of the crunch has been that our the donations not only go towards the building, right? That's not just the main, you know, figure that it goes to. We we privately take care of families in need. Right, and that's been a challenge, and that's that hurts. That we, we have families that are in need of help of their mortgage payments and their car payments, and we're having those discussions privately with people, and and that's been hard for us to even write checks for that, you know, let alone the church building. But that's not even we're not even talking about the church building right now. We're just talking about just us taking care of our own, and so just we had to like move money recently because we were close to overdrafting. So we had to like move money just so we can help someone with the car payment. It's like, that's not, you know, just, I'm kind of just throwing that out there so that we're not just hyper-focused in the building, which is good for us to be focused in the building. But part of the tithing is that's, we, we help people um, just to like to give you some ideas. Like we have a certain amount of money allocated that helps people on a monthly basis get therapy, individual therapy, counts, uh, couples therapy. We have money set aside just for that. And we, because sometimes those costs deter people from getting therapy. So we don't want that to be a deterrent. So we help that our, our church, we pay, we pay for that. We take care of that. We, so that, yeah. And yeah, so just, it just know that it, we're not just talking about the church account. We're talking about just the health of the whole thing, the whole thing. And so we just need everybody to look at the big picture on that. I think at this point, maybe when I wanted to do some concluding remarks. Did Alex have oh, a question? Or just sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay. 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 So God willing, this will be the, the last general meeting. We, we talk about this now that we laid the whole thing, and the rest will be reminders. Yes. What is the matter?
So what's the next steps? So right now, before we conclude, and you've reminded us of what's going on, and you've got, got us up to date, and before we conclude, and we're going to pray about it, we're going to pray about it. what are the next steps, and how are we going to be reminded of what are we doing next? Like, I think that we're going to, uh, we're going, to, I don't know how, Carl, <laughs> like, the, don't leave Carl. <laughs> uh, I think that slide, I think that we're going to really focus on this and the milestones here. Uh, when it comes to the church building. I think generally we're asking to be regular on the tithing. That's just a general conversation we have. And I'll let each one uh, look inward to be honest about that. But I think in terms of communicating for the needs for this 1.4, I think we're going to have a goal by the end of March. We'll put a thermometer up. We'll put it on the church website. We'll put it on the church emails. We're campaigning to raise $188,000 by the end of March. That's our goal. And we'll... Every week, we're going to update everybody what's going on for the four weeks and see where we're at. And then we'll pray that we get there. And then we'll reset. April 1st, here's the new goal. We have these things, these three things need to be taken care of from March to June. We'll itemize that. Here we go. And, you know, we'll just keep everybody up to date. We'll keep communicating outwardly and making visuals so that people can be triggered with their visuals. And we'll see how it goes. Unless we have some to do. We'll do donor's choice. We'll look into those things. And, you know... If you guys have suggestions, I think it's important that we have those conversations with the board members and things like that. Um, yes. So just a quick question. So sorry. Uh, how conservative did we say the one point four four million dollars was? Is that is that a pretty conservative number or? That's an actual number. So that's a that's that's a well based calculated number. So that is the actual number that we need. Um, so it could go up or or down, or it could it could go up potentially. It, 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 I mean. I guess it could go up. I mean, the the one point four four. I think we think is 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 a pretty reflective number of what we're targeting. Um, again, there's the potential that we could get for a grant, uh, a grant for some of this stuff, in the tune of about two hundred thousand. But we're not holding our breath for that. So, you know, with building costs, they generally tend to go up. But um, if we can gather the one point four, because these are already quotes that we've obtained. Uh, based on, on uh, is what we're gathering the, these estimates from. And also, David, if you had asked, you had asked the question, what's next? You know, I, I per we personally believe, you know, we like to tread lightly in the, in the form of, of, of the ask or the expectations. And so, you know, we do believe in the power of suggestion more than, or, you know, more than a deliberate ask. But if, if the request is not clear, um, you know, we, we our ask is that to increase the tithing that you can or give to the extent that, you know, you can and, and also consider a promissory note. Um, so those are really the two asks in order to bridge this. But realizing also that, you know, it's every household is different. It's hard to prescribe, um, you know, a, a, a pattern for everybody. Go ahead. It's the it's the third ask as well. Right. It's the now what ideas are we going to come up with? to help fundraise and everything else. So it's not just ask of, you know, honing up exactly, right? It's now, how do we ask for these events? What are the events that we're going to do? What, what are the events that we're going to go for the, you know, the fundraising? Are we going to go to the city? Are we going to go to the, you know, where are, what's, what committees are there that we can join now to help right. ask? Because today's not the only day that we're coming up with ideas, right? Right. And then when those ideas have to come and then we have to execute those ideas. So when is that happening? When's the next meeting? When's the next, what's next? Perfect. Sorry, for all these words. Um, this church was full like half an hour ago, and now it's yeah. like ten percent of the church was here. All the information that you provided, do you think you could send in an email to like the entire church, like everything that was here, so that oh, it's being reported. Okay, and will it be sent to their email as well? Yes. Well, okay. And then I had a question on the promissory note. You're mentioning like interest rates and stuff like that. Um, on the email, can you kind of flesh out more about? The interest rates, because that might be interesting to some people who can't give a large amount now, but if they could get it back later, they could give it as a loan. Sure. Um, that would be important, I think. And we need to keep that broad because different, we don't want to create such strict criteria to where, or, or, you know, we're willing to work with what people are willing to give and what, what the situations are. So that, that's kind of a, a broad discussion to have based on what people, you know, it's, it's going to be customized as far as what we could give. 
or what we you know what we can work with from that regard. Um, as far as so, wanna, sorry, I just wanted to clarify that everyone understood because you mentioned the interest rate again. Um, so technically, there is no interest rate, but whatever is considered, like if let's just say we put a, an estimate of five or ten percent interest, um, the lender is not going to take that money from the church. The church will write um, a donation letter saying, um, "You forgave this interest, and we consider that as a donation to the church, so that you can put that on your taxes." Does that make sense? So there's no money being exchanged hands there. So maybe just make it a little more like straightforward. So let's say you, the lender offers the church a loan of a hundred thousand dollars. We put five percent. We say five percent interest, right? At the end of the day, if you give us two years or three years to get our stuff aligned, we start making payments on the hundred thousand dollars. So by the end of that term, let's say you allowed us, you know, five years to pay back the hundred thousand dollars. You give us two years head start, and then when we start, we start five years later, we pay the whole hundred thousand dollars. But the but the percentage, the the five percent interest rate would go towards the we said you donated the five percent as interest, and we write a tax note saying that you donated five percent of the hundred thousand dollars. You get you back hundred thousand dollars. We benefited from having the loan, and the donation is the is the interest. That you, but there's no money exchange. If that makes it, if that makes sense, does that help clarify that? So you're not making the five percent, but you're gifting the five percent as a as a donation to us. And we write a tax letter saying that you gave us the five percent, and you receive your hundred thousand dollars back at, after like seven years. You know, like give us time. <laughs> that's really like please. <laughs> um, does that make sense? Does that help clarify the loan dynamic that we're thinking of? That other churches have used this model. And so we're just adopting the same model that other churches have recommended to us. Yes. Can you uh, talk? About I, don't, I don't know if that was. Was that? I don't know if the next follow-up meeting or whatnot. I just to kind of put that to bed. So, Avona, can you talk about the five and two committee? So, about a couple of years ago, we started a committee of five loaves and two fish. Um, committee that helped with fundraisers and I, I think other than the festival we haven't that committee really dissolved so we need to restart it but if anyone is interested in helping with that um see your um, and and we'll try to organize um or help kick start that lead group again because honestly I, I don't have much time to to focus on this, uh, I'm, I'm busy with everything else. <laughs> so we want the, the congregation um, to step up and to serve in this. In this we'll we'll be a, like a, um, aware and give our two cents, but uh, you give the five minutes. <laughs> I have one question. So again, as far as the next steps, should we come to Abuna with our ideas, and then we will have maybe some selective campaigns that we can run to? So I think the meeting, the group will need to meet and discuss things and then we'll put a plan together because um, there might be a hundred different ideas and we only go with one or two for now. Um, or email Abuna where people can send um, ideas and then it filters through the board and then it either gets accepted or voted on or whatnot. So, oh, so you want everyone to, to give the, the ideas? Oh, sure. But it's, it's some okay. input. We'll try to create a Google form or something. Um, if you are interested in giving a loan uh, and having that conversation, I would recommend talking to Abuna David. Uh, <laughs> uh, he'll be the one who's kind of uh, organizing all the loan stuff. So please talk to Abuna about personal loans. Okay, Abuna, well, I think it's time to. Um, there was a question re relating to the automatic deduction system. I know, I think we have, do we have that on, on the website? Okay, do you want to explain? Well, I, I guess it was in response to a question that came up earlier. There was uh, someone that might have been interested in automatic regular giving. Just making, I think the, the comment was, uh, and, and I'm guilty of this too, forgetting 
you know, maybe to, to, to actively every month go in and, and, uh, and do a donation. So there, there is an option online. Um, if you go to one of the QR codes on the wall, uh, it takes you to a portion of our website where you can donate electronically. And there's a checkbox in there where if you want to make it a recurring donation. So for, for your regular tithing, if that's an option that you want to take advantage of to make it automatic, you can go to the QR codes on the wall. Any other questions, please? Okay, just to remind you, um, it is a bit rain, you know, it's rained quite a bit, um, but we are planning to still go um, to, to the site if you want to look and give a little tour. I'm not gonna step on the, like it's basically in, I was told it's like a lake on top of the concrete, um, but we're still gonna take advantage of the opportunity. Um, there's the, uh, it should be 14715, that's my help, um, Peyton Drive, but you park in um, Chino Valley Community Church, which is right before, just north of, of this property. Um, and then there's a side gate, and um, we'll meet you there to kind of, it should probably be very quick because <laughs> there's only certain areas where we can step. Um, so the, the nearby church asked us to not to go before one o'clock, so we're giving our neighbors, you know, we're very thankful that they gave us this opportunity. Um, so we cleared it with them, but we need them to finish their services um, and leave the property so we're not, so one o'clock, um, not before one, please. Um, and then God willing, we have a tentative date for March 25th to pray the liturgy there. We also cleared it with the neighboring church, but it would be a Saturday morning as opposed to a Sunday. Um, and We'll, we'll give more details um, as that date is confirmed. Okay, thank you again for your time. Menaneloya, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now we ages amen. We proclaim and say, our Lord Jesus Christ, sit for us forty days and forty nights. To save us from our sins, save us and have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Christ our God. O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish us your peace, forgive us our sins. For thine is the power, the glory, the blessing, and the majesty forever. Amen. Lord, make us ready to pray with all thanksgiving. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not a temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Lord, Father, grace is only begun, Son of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Give the gift, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Depart in peace, and peace of the Lord be with you. There's holy bread for you still. <laughs>